Christina Hoff Summers from the American Enterprise Institute. <laughs> and the factual feminist reporting to duty. <laughs> Many years ago, the Nobel Prize winning novelist V.S. Naipaul gave a lecture about the pursuit of happiness. And the lecture was entitled, Our Universal Civilization. His words capture so much that I love and admire about Ayan. Naipaul says that the pursuit of happiness is an elastic idea. It encompasses everyone. He says its history is marvelous to contemplate. It is, he says, an immense human idea. It can't be reduced to a fixed system. It cannot generate fanaticism. But it is known to exist, and because of that, other more rigid systems in the end blow away. He added that so much is contained in it, the idea of the individual, of responsibility, of choice. He said it implies a certain kind of awakened spirit. Well, Ayan's spirit first awakened when she and her family fled to Kenya. She attended an English-speaking school where she discovered some heretical literary tracts. Now, I don't mean books by Tom Paine, Mary Wollstonecraft, John Stuart Mill. She would find those a few years later. Ion came upon a set of Nancy Drew mysteries. <laughs> and she would hide them inside a Quran and read them when no one was looking. Now, for her, these weren't simply exciting mysteries. They were manifestos of freedom. Uh, Nancy Drew introduced this 13-year-old Somali girl, 13 or 14-year-old Somali girl, to a world of adventure, action, a world of female agency. They introduced her to a heroine who was independent, self-directed, stylish, and who did not always do what she was told. Ion began to devour other English books, books by Charles Dickens and even Jackie Collins. <laughs> Well, these glimpses of freedom, these glimpses of happiness, they stayed with her. And when she was forced into an arranged marriage as a young woman, she knew there was something better out there. She fled this arranged marriage for asylum in the Netherlands. Now, once in Holland, she shed the veil, she bought a pair of blue jeans, she learned to ride a bike, she got a, a job, she mastered Dutch. She secured a college education. She even got herself elected to the Dutch parliament. Well, the Dutch have a word, uh, gezellig, uh, which means a fun and convivial atmosphere. And in fact, Dutch life specializes in gezelligheid, and so does Ayan. So you might think that Ayan would have achieved happiness there. But as, as V.S. Naipaul says, the ideal of pursuing happiness doesn't stop at contentment. It entails responsibility. And Ayan took those responsibilities seriously. She took the responsibilities of freedom to heart. She was dismayed to find that there were many poor Somali women living in Holland who were trapped in violent and repressive marriages. Somali girls were taken out of school at nine or 10 years old. Yet Ayan discovered that many seemingly enlightened Dutch colleagues were unwilling to intervene. Why? Because they thought it would be intolerant to interfere with the cultural practices of a minority population. Ayan knew otherwise. As Na Naipaul says, the pursuit of happiness is all encompassing. It applies to everyone. Ayan believed it applied to those Somali women and girls. She believed it encompassed millions of women across the globe who remain captive to radical Islam. At grave risk to herself, she took up their cause. And her experience in Holland taught her a lesson she has never forgotten. Freedom is not only threatened by repressive ideologies and states, it is threatened when those of us in the free world become unwilling or unable to defend it. Ion 
never, never takes freedom for granted. She never stops defending it. She has become an indefatigable opponent of postmodern relativism. And for legions of Americans, this self-made immigrant woman epitomizes, she exemplifies responsible citizenship and authentic liberalism. Now, even though Ayan has taken the responsibility, she has taken the responsibility of freedom very seriously, she has also availed itself of its joys. She has made a wonderful life herself in the United States with her husband, Neil, and her young son, Thomas. She has a large and devoted circle of friends, and as anyone who knows her well will tell you, she has a great capacity for fun. A few years ago, we were together on a ship off the coast of Alaska. It was a warm and sunny day, and the boat came equipped with jet skis. Did we want to take them out, somebody asked. Yes, said Ion. <laughs> and before I knew it, she was driving at high speed, sort of like Nancy Drew in that roadster. <laughs> Uh, she was just racing across these icy, deep waters, making exuberant twists and turns. When she returned, I said, was it scary? She said, no, it was wonderful, and I don't even know how to swim. <laughs> 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 to paraphrase a devoted friend of Ion, the late Christopher Hitchens, the three most beautiful words in the language of freedom and the pursuit of happiness are Ion, Hersi, Ali. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.